Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be discussing why I think Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl could signal a bit of a change for the Pokemon franchise. I think Game Freak might be waning away, moving away, from remakes. I think they might be restructuring how they do releases, and I think that we can see some clues within Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as well as Legends Arceus and its implications for the future of the franchise. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Pokemon has had an interesting couple of months. If you had told me back in January that we were going to get two Sinnoh games announced within the next month, and they were both going to be completely different from what I could have expected or participated in anticipating, then I would have told you you were crazy. Back in January, I had assumed that, like most people, we were going to be getting Sword and Shield style Diamond and Pearl remakes. And as we saw with Legends Arceus and with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, that is just simply not the case. BDSM, BDSP, that's a weird, I don't like that moniker at all. BDSP are faithful remakes. They are taking the style of Diamond and Pearl and uprising them to 1080p, hopefully 60 FPS, by Ilka Inc., a separate company. Granted, it's a company that has worked on Pokemon before. They worked on Pokemon Home, but it's a different company. It's not Game Freak doing this. Game Freak is all hands on deck on a future game, Legends Arceus, which is completely different from Sword and Shield and from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's a single player campaign set in ancient Sinnoh. You're, uh, it's a totally open world. You're starting with starter Pokemon that aren't native to the Sinnoh region. It's completely different. So that begs the question, does any of this give us some insight into what Game Freak's future approach is going to be for Pokemon games? I'm of the opinion that I think it does. They have staffed out a remake. Game Freak have said, we do not want to work on a one-for-one -one remake of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl like we did for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. For those of you who remember, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were largely faithful games from Ruby and Sapphire. It was just that they took the for, uh, they took the graphical style and they took the animations and they took the design of Pokemon X and Y and they brought it over. There were a couple different additions to those games. Mega Evolution was one of them. Being able to soar on your Pokemon was another. The Dex Nav and some of the uh, bottom screen features was another addition. But largely they were faithful remakes. When we got Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they were incredible remakes but they took an original game, brought it up to the new generation, and added some features. With Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, we don't have that. We're all assuming there are going to be new features in this game, but it's not Game Freak doing it. And I think that's more noteworthy than some people have mentioned up to this point. I understand that we're only about a month out from the game's announcement. It's crazy that we're almost approaching that. But it's a totally different developer. This is a remake of one of Game Freak's most beloved uh, generations. To the fact that they were able to put it, they were, they took this and they staffed it out, as I've mentioned like three or four times now, it's not normal for them. And I think it signals a shift in how Game Freak is going to be approaching their old generations. We've now seen that through the Legends series, which does seem to be something they're hoping to turn into a new series, because Legends, if you guys look at the name scheme, is the, the branding, it's like the version. And then Arceus is this specific game. They also have a different logo in this than any other Pokemon game. It's a greenish, bluish looking logo. This is the first time that the Japanese version of the game is using Pokemon, like the, the Pokemon logo that we have in the West. Usually they use a Japanese logo and it's pocket monsters. This is very different. And the wording in the trailer is also suspect. They're talking about a new bold direction for the Pokemon franchise, a step into the future. I'm of the opinion that I think when you connect these threads with the limited amount of information we have at this point, I think it's telling us that we're going to be done with traditional remakes. Is there a chance that we might get up versions of old games so you can continue exploring these Pokemon games on newer consoles? Sure, I think that's entirely possible, but I think the, the future of Pokemon is not going to be the Heart Golds and Soul Silvers, the Omega Rubies and Alpha Sapphires. I think the future of Pokemon games is going to look more like the continued advancement of what we saw in Sword and Shield, better graphical fidelity, 
better models, hopefully as generations come and go, the incorporation of more open world aspects like we saw with the DLC. But I also think you're going to see Legends as a separate series, a, a co-running series with the main games, with the sole purpose of allowing Game Freak to explore the worlds that they've already crafted in new and interesting ways. They're already doing this with Legends Arceus. It's a totally new map. It uses the same framework as the Sinnoh region that we all know and love, but we're going to see landmarks, we're going to see locations, we're going to see layouts that are not one for one with the old games. Now, obviously, they wouldn't be. This is a totally different format, a totally different uh, overworld style, but I don't think landmarks are going to fully match up in this game. I think they'll be similar, obviously, because even with our own real world, it takes a very, very long time for geological lands to change and alter with, with tens of millions of years. And it appears, based on a lot of research people have done, we're only really going back around 200 to 600 years in this game to the more feudal Japan era. So I think this is how they're going to explore stories, history, lore, things that we've been clamoring for in the Pokemon community for years now in future games. I think that's how we could get a quote-unquote Pokemon Z. We could see ancient Kalos. Imagine going back to Kalos during the time of the war. Imagine going back to the Unova region and seeing the breakup of the original dragon, the, the power of the dragon tamers at the time. Imagine going back to Hoenn and getting to understand the Draconid people, getting to hear about Zinnia's ancestors. So many of these stories that Pokemon fans have been asking Game Freak for never really seemed realistic. It just wasn't in the main style of what Pokemon games are. For always, for forever and always, it had been that we're going to learn about these little lore bits from dialogue with characters and NPCs, or we're going to learn about it from some of the threads you pull from the very shallow stories that we get in Pokemon games. But now it appears that there is a formula and a format for us getting some of these stories moving forward. And I think when you combine that with the fact that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are what they are, I've been reading your comments in my previous discussion video. Many of you are very mixed on what these games are going to bring us. Some of you are optimistic like myself, whereas others of you aren't the most excited. You don't like the design. You don't like the way they're taking remakes. You had hoped that we would have gotten something bigger for Diamond and Pearl. I totally understand all of that. I was in your camp a month ago. But I think it signals something, and I think it signals ultimately what I think is probably a good direction for this franchise to go in. Legends Arceus is incredibly innovative. Totally open world, to our knowledge. Getting to use and raise Pokemon that aren't native to the region we're exploring. Getting to explore a time period where we're going to get a lot of, you would assume, story content. I've seen a lot of great suggestions from the community that there could be an incredibly in-depth system of trying to learn the attributes and the way these Pokemon live when you're trying to create the first Pokedex, trying to study movements and how they go about operating in this world. The battle system looks like it's incredibly more in-depth, and it, feel, it, it seems as if your character can even interact with Pokemon in certain ways that you never could in the main games. This is a massive step forward, and this is being treated almost as a mainline game. We don't know the compatibility. We don't know how that's all going to work. One would assume there'd be something because Pokemon have said in many interviews over the years that the idea of trainers being able to take their Pokemon with them as their journeys evolve is something that's very important to them. So I think we are going to see some, some kind of connectivity definitely in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and probably in Legends Arceus. I also think that there's probably going to be some interesting story beats in Legends Arceus. There's the popular theory floating about that Cyrus could be involved somehow, because the patch that the trainer characters wear looks very, very similar to the Team Galactic logo. And as we all know, in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Ar uh, Cyrus was sent through time and space and ended up somewhere. Who knows? There's a lot of possibilities with this. And I think when you put it all together, I think it signals a shift. I think it would have been simple for Game Freak to say... Let's take the Sword and Shield engine. Let's build Sinnoh around it. Let's give them Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the Sinnoh, uh, the Gen 8 games with Mega, with Dynamaxing and Gmaxing and integrating the two stories together and fully finishing your Pokedex, including all of the Pokemon in Generation 8. I think that would have been really simple for them to do. And I think they actually are taking a good approach here. Ultimately, I want to know what you guys think. Because the ending of Remakes as we know it does a lot for Pokemon. There were going to be questions coming up in future generations as to how you'd remake games like Black and White. And then what would you do with Black and White 2? With 
Gen 10, would you have remade Black and White? And then with Generation 12, would you have remade Black and White 2? Would you have done two remakes? Would you have incorporated their stories together, possibly giving you a Delta episode-like kind of quick speed-up version of the events of Black and White 2? I have a feeling that these discussions have happened. I think Game Freak looked at what they've done after Generation 4 and said, if we keep to this formula we've been doing for the last few years, remakes are going to be more of a challenge. And remakes just ultimately aren't the most creative avenue for any game developer. I think this is a shift. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments section below. Do you think we're moving away from classic, as I move my microphone, do you think we're moving away from classic remakes? Or you think this is just a very experimental period for Pokemon's history and we're going to get back to normal? With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I upload Pokemon content every single week, as well as our new Minecraft Pixelmon series that started a couple days ago. Also, I know nobody does it, but hit that notification bell so you never miss a new Linky upload. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.